Hi everyone, so let's now take a look at how monetary policy feeds through to the real economy to affect the price level. Right, so here we start over here on this, uh, this diagram that I've drawn out, uh, which helps us to understand the transmission mechanism of an interest rate change over here, all the way across to our change in the price level on the far right side. Okay, so obviously starting here, if the Bank of England uh, Monetary Policy Committee choose to actually uh, change their official interest rate, and they change that base rate from the current 0.5% where we currently are, and raise it to 0.75%, well, that will have direct repercussion on each of these areas. So let's break them down. Firstly, the market interest rate is likely to change. This will be firstly because tracker rate mortgages i.e. Uh, mortgages which actively track the Bank of England base rate uh, will then rise. Uh, so they'll add on that quarter percent uh, increase to their interest rate. Further to that, banks are also likely to price this interest rate change into uh, their le lending costs. So it will mean that loans will actually uh, become more expensive. Uh, and further to that, of course, savings uh, will be more rewarded by banks in all likelihood as a result of this interest rate change. Uh, okay, moving on, asset prices, right? Well, if a interest rate change is unexpected by the market and then it takes place, you're likely to see firstly a fall in the stock market as a whole uh, because really there's a, there's a greater incentive to save rather than consume and therefore the uh, potential for business profits is uh, expected to be a downward expectation really. So therefore asset prices may fall directly if there is an unexpected interest rate change. Uh, if the market is perhaps expecting an interest rate rise and it doesn't happen, then the stock market might actually go up in response to such news. Uh, okay, now in addition to that, a further asset of course that's uh, important to consider here is uh, the housing market because we mentioned about tracker rate mortgages becoming more expensive in particular, but all mortgages are likely to become a little more expensive as a result of this interest rate change. So that will have a direct impact on those uh, on housing prices, but that transmission mechanism will probably take a little longer to actually feed through. So it won't be until the following month where tracker rate mortgage holders uh, notice an increase in their uh, in their outgoings because that additional mortgage cost, for instance, okay? And so that takes time to actually feed through the market and affect the price level. Uh, so the stock market will be affected very quickly, immediately, in fact, okay? Uh, so what's interesting to consider when you're looking at asset prices is, of course, the wealth effect. So how that affects confidence and how that then affects consumption as a direct result of that. So that's our next area here, business expectations and consumer confidence. So if asset prices are rising, there is that positive uh, wealth effect. There could alternatively be a negative wealth effect from interest rate rises. But this is where that forward guidance, i.e. suggesting and uh, prompting uh, the markets and the public to understand where interest rates is likely to go is important because it can help to inform uh, business expectations and reassure consumers uh, that uh, the economy is perhaps uh, just growing nicely and therefore there is a need to actually just ensure that any inflationary pressures are curbed. Okay, um, so then the next area, of course, is the value at the exchange rate, and there's likely to, again, be a direct impact here. Uh, so in the case of an interest rate rise, uh, we will have a stronger pound, okay? So imports will be cheaper, exports will be dearer. Uh, now, a stronger pound is likely to support greater consumption through imported uh, consumer goods. But of course, could help to support uh, investment in capital goods which were imported from overseas. So all of this will then feed through to domestic demand, the level of demand taking place within our economy. So the domestic level of demand is of course consumption, investment and government expenditure. Uh, so those areas 
will be affected by the interest rate changes and the changes in expectations that are taking place. If there are real concerns by businesses and consumers uh, about the confidence they have in the economy, then the government may seek to reassure them by conducting uh, some government expenditure or undertaking further capital investment. Then we've got the net external demand and of course that's directly affected by the exchange rate and the price of our currency with regard to other currencies. So that, that net external demand is X minus M. So in total we can see we've got C plus I plus G minus X uh, or plus X minus M. It's just a minus of the UK of course. Uh, that feeds through to our total aggregate demand in the economy. And then, of course, that will have a direct implication for the domestic demand pool inflationary factors and inflationary pressures that will affect the CPI as a whole. In addition to this, we can also see the value of the exchange rate will directly correlate to the price of imports. And those, the price of imports and the cost push inflation, or alternatively, perhaps importing deflation, uh, deflationary pressures from abroad as a result of the stronger currency, because imports are cheaper now, remember, uh, will again feed through to that CPI level as a whole. Okay, so there it is. Uh, I hope that's nice and straightforward to understand that, guys. All right, let me know. Thanks a lot.